In this video, we're going to cover the following topics, randomness, frequency tables, and histograms. Randomness is, uh, can be shown in, in different ways. Uh, random values is, is one thing. If we look at resistors, those of you that, that know about resistors have used them, have probably measured them to see what values you have for a particular resistor and notice that they weren't exactly what was indicated on the resistor. This example shows the three colors blue, red, green on a resistor and then this particular example would have gold as the fourth band, the fourth band color. I don't have a gold pen so <laughs> just imagine that that last band is gold colored. So the three, there are the three colors on the resistor, the blue, red, green, the blue indicates a 6, the red indicates a 2, and the green indicates 5. And so the resistor value would be 6.2 times 10 to the 5 ohms. The 6.2 comes from the blue and the red, and the exponent on the 10 comes from the third color green. Now the, f the last band, or the gold band in this case, indicates plus or minus 5%. And what that band tells us is that the actual resistor value will be the resistor value given on the resistor itself, but it will be within plus and minus 5% of that value. So it won't be exactly 6.2 times 10 to the 5 ohms. In fact, it probably will never be 6.2 times 10 to the 5 ohms because to have exactly that, that resistor value if you think about it, we'd have to have an infinite precision and, you know, have exactly 6.2 times 10 to the 5 on that resistor measurement, and it's just really not possible. So the band, the gold band on the end, indicates kind of the range of values that you might find for that particular resistor. So if you're developing a circuit and you make a design and you expect a certain outcome or output voltage of that resi of that circuit you'll find that you know hey this circuit isn't working exactly the way I expected and it's because every component in that you have in that circuit is not exactly what you expect or what you intended that value to be and so there's some randomness to all of the values and all the components in that circuit and therefore the output of that circuit will also have a random a random value so if you suppose you made a whole bunch of those circuits with you know different resistors in each one then each of those are going to perform a little bit different from each other and a little bit different from what you had designed now another thing that can happen is the signal that you're measuring from you know any particular source might be random itself the there are things that can cause random values on those voltage levels. Uh, for instance, thermal noise can be present in, in any component. What happens is because of the molecular uh, properties of the particular device, the temperature of that device causes those, um, those uh, atomic structures to actually cause noise. And so if you're you know, if you really measured um, fine enough or in, in enough detail, let's say, of a particular resistor, you'll find that its value changes. It's not exactly, you know, it's not always the same value. And that can be because of, of thermal noise uh, that's actually inherent in that particular device. Another way that random signals can occur is through electromagnetic interference. Uh, for instance, suppose you had, you know, you're in a room that has power power lines running through the walls and those power lines have the you know 120 volt uh, 60 Hertz AC you know current running through them that current can cause electromagnetic fields to be generated and those electromagnetic fields then can be picked up by you know your circuit that you're using or any uh, lines that you might be using, any any probes that you might be using to pick up those those voltages that you're interested in. And so electromagnetic interference 
is is always present and it's all around us and those can cause some random values on your on the signals that you're trying to monitor also systems themselves can have random characteristics uh, some parts of the system might change or their characteristic might change over time uh, think about a a car that you might have had or that you might have seen you know when you first buy a car you know the res the shock absorbers and the springs on them you know usually work pretty close to the way they're they're intended to but over time what happens you've seen you've all seen old cars going down the street and they hit a bump what happens they bounce and they bounce and they bounce they can, you know and the reason is because the springs and the shock absorbers in the car have changed over time so at any particular point in time you won't know exactly what those values will be or the characteristics of those components will be also the heat of the particular device might cause it to change its characteristics or if you load the system in a certain way might cause the properties of that that character of that system to change and so really the any particular system that you're analyzing uh, may be different from time to time or in different situations that it's it's being used in so how do we deal with that randomness well one of the ways is to look at the values that we're dealing with and put them in a frequency table and then plot them using a histogram the frequency table shows the number of times a particular item occurs or the number of times that a item falls within a given interval now if we're dealing with particular items or individual items as you see but down below for instance car or truck or bus and those items are in our sample set we basically just count the number of times those items occur so in the example you see car we may have had in the sample a certain number of vehicles and there were 15 of them were cars and 12 of them were trucks and so on and so we just count those items and that will be the frequency of occurrence of that particular item what do we do if we have real numbers as our outcomes well we have to deal with the real line and values that occur on the real line and you see the example here we've got uh, indicators at 70 75 80 85 and so on basically what you'll do is you'll break up the real line into intervals and then count the number of times items fall within those intervals so the first interval we see there is 70 to 75 and the square bracket on the interval indicates that the 70 is included in that interval and the round bracket include or indicates that the 75 is not included in that interval so for instance suppose we had an outcome that was exactly 75 where do we put it? Do we put it in the interval below or the interval above well we put actually put it in the interval above because if you will notice the interval here the next interval indi has a square bracket which means that the 75 is included in that interval and so we just take all the n the numbers from our outcomes and count how many times they occur in each interval a histogram is basically just a plot of that that data that frequency table it's a bar graph and the height of each of those bars indicate how many times items occurred in that at that interval and so the bar graph you see there from 70 to 75 there was only one item and from 75 to 80 there were three items each of those bars is centered on the center of the interval and so in this case the first interval was 7075 and the center of that is 72.5 and therefore the bar is centered on on that number 72.5 and the bar could be you could show the bar going the whole width of that interval 70 to 75 which is what I did in this case or sometimes the plotting mechanisms or the plotting routines may put a little gap in there uh, but we're basically just showing the the interval and the number of times items occurred in each of those intervals so here's an example 
I took two one dollar bills that I had in my wallet and I wrote down their serial numbers. There's eight digits in each serial number so that gives us a total of 16 digits and I <clears throat> counted up how many times each of those digits occurred or each time each of those numbers occurred 0 through 9 so on the first or for the first 0 or for 0 I crossed out the two zeros and there were only two so I wrote down two in the frequency table there are only two ones in those serial numbers so I wrote a two for the for the number one and so on there aren't any twos and so I put a zero and I just counted them all up and you see the results there once you have the frequency table you can plot that information in a histogram and so notice that the zero being the first number in that frequency table the first bar in the histogram is at zero and notice that I've centered the bar on zero I didn't put the bar from zero to one I centered it right on on zero and so that indicates that at zero or for the number zero we only have two items and so on so the number notice that the bar for the number one is centered on one and it of course goes to two because there were only two ones and you can see the rest of the plot and, and the result uh, of the histogram. Now the last column in the frequency table is the cumulative frequency. What we do for that is we basically just accumulate all the numbers as we go down the table. So the first element had a, was, uh, had a frequency of 2, so we write a 2 in the cumulative frequency column the next element had a 2 so we take the previous cumulative frequency value and add the new number to it so in this case it'll be 2 plus 2 so we get 4 now for the number 2 in the column or in the frequency table there were 0 of those so notice in the cumulative frequency column we take our previous value which was 4 we add 0 to it and now we have 4 in the cumulative frequency column for 2. And we continue that way down through the whole thing. And so notice that as we're accumulating, accumulating all of those numbers, we're basically counting how many we have up to that point. So for instance, at 6, there have been 13 digits that have fallen from 6 and below. Of course, at the very end, when we get to the last number, number 9, we should have all of them. And in this case, there were 8 numbers in each, each serial number, which gives us a total of 16. And so the last number in the cumulative frequency column should be 16.